We are joined now by former Toronto City Councillor Kyle Ray. Kyle, it's Pride Week this week, and for someone like myself who moved to the city in 1999, Pride is is primarily a party and a celebration and a, really a time of joy. But I wonder if for the listeners you could take us back to 1980 and to the roots of Pride and tell us a little bit what the atmosphere was like with that first Pride. Well, that first Pride was a very nervous event. It followed uh, the bath raid by the police back in February of 1981, and there were 300 men who were charged with being found in some bathhouses across the city all in one night. It's the largest police action uh, since the War Measures Act were called in 1970. So it was a huge uh, police action. We were vilified as... Uh, um, non-citizens, we were pedophiles, we were uh, gross, we were violators of, of natural law. That, you know, back in the 80s it was like that. <clears throat> so to put on a pride event was a very traumatizing, uh, it was, uh, we were very concerned about our own safety, uh, but we were able in five weeks to put together an event that had about a thousand people come up, come out, and we we uh, had the event in Grange Park behind the Art Gallery of Ontario, and we had a, a march through the downtown on Young Street. The police videotaped and photographed the event from the roof of 52 Division. Um, the Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence uh, exercised the 52 Division building. <laughs> it was quite hilarious. Um, but there was, in the back of everyone's mind, there was the anxiety of being photographed, of being seen, being identified. Because this was in the middle of the day. Most gay events that had happened in the past happened in the evening, at night, when it was easy, easily, easy to disappear into the darkness and people couldn't photograph you. But this was in the broad daylight on a Sunday afternoon in June. And we had a wonderful event. Mind you, there, were, there was no one on the sidewalks watching us. We were still hated. We were still vilified back then. And, of course, the world has changed immensely since then. Hey, Kyle, how many people, and I, I've heard you speak about that before, how events used to take place maybe on Toronto Island or in the evening uh, to avoid that, that being photographed, being out. How many people, what a courageous event that must have been, that first march, you know, out and with the police photographing. How many people attended that first march? Well, the first, well, the first uh, event, probably about 1,000, 1,500 people, and there may have been about 800 people on the march through the downtown. And, you know, some people wore wigs. Um, there were people who were very creative about how they presented, because remember, after the bath raids, the police gave out to the to employers the name of the names of the people they arrested, and some people lost their jobs and lost their lives. And Kyle, just to bring us up to today, I mean, you, we've gone from police videotaping to our police chief, Chief Blair, marching in pride with people, and you were a huge part of that work with the police force, but also for a long time, you were the only openly gay count, uh, city councillor here in Toronto. Tell us a little bit about just what that means to you to go to pride as it is now, as this celebration that's sort of fully embraced by the community and the police chief is marching in it. How did we accomplish really that much change in what must have felt like a long time, but historically speaking, isn't all that long of a time? Well, you know, you're right. It isn't that long of a time, but, you know, there has been a generation or two that have passed since 1981. And then the new generation, as we've been seeing in articles about the gay village and uh, people being um, comfortable in the uh, queer community, you know, the new generations aren't familiar with the battles of the past. And, and I don't just mean ha having read them, but there, is, there are generations, my generation, that fought those battles. And so that's part of our heritage and it's part of how we deal with being gay. Um, we had to fight for our place in society as respected taxpayers, as full citizens. And demanding that took a lot of courage and it took a lot out of people's lives. Um, and the younger generations don't have that battle scar. And so there's a, a learning and an experience and, an, of course, a different experience. And that's what I would say is part of the, the intriguing part of the Pride Day event. Because in the past, it was just our community 
you could go to Pride and you would just see, you know, <laughs> once a year you would see the same people and you'd say hi and you'd kiss and you'd hug and then you'd move on. It was a, like the gathering of a clan. Now there are so many people who aren't part of the community who come and celebrate with us. It's a very different animal than it was 20 years ago, 30 years ago. So that transition is its kind of awkward. It's a wonderful feeling to see how Torontonians embrace the queer community now. Um, but I think there's some, somewhere, sometime, someplace, there needs to be an event where we get together to celebrate who we are, um, just for the community itself. And remember what we fought for, what we built, and what achievements we've made over the years. And certainly, I, I've heard that tension from a lot of people at celebrating the, the greater involvement, the greater corporate involvement, showing showing more acceptance, but at the same time, a sense that, that something has, has been lost, uh, certainly, as oh, you and, say. Yeah, and some of those corporate sponsors that people don't like were leaders in, in making sure their staff got same-sex uh, benefits, uh, health benefits, that their spouses got pension rights. Um, so, you know, you, some people can criticize the the, uh, the commercialization or the corporate sponsorships, but some of those corporate sponsors were were leaders in their culture uh, to improve our equality rights. So they shouldn't be negated. And Kyle, just one personal question: After mm -hmm. serving for 19 years as as a city councilor, that included uh, the Church Wellesley Village. This is your first uh, Pride in a long time as a, a private citizen, as it were. How are how are you going to be celebrating Pride this year? Well, I already started. I was at the uh, the uh, flag raising the this morning and uh, watched as our our new mayor failed to turn up. So um, there's a good start. <laughs> there, there, there is a start, and. Uh, <laughs> And my very last question, it, it's so long that, uh, that you were uh, my city councillor as I live uh, downtown, but what are you up to these days, Kyle? I'm uh, now consulting. I've got a private practice with uh, a colleague, and we are um, providing development uh, advice to developers so that we can get a better product be being built in the city. Thank you so much for joining us, and thank you for giving us that window back to, uh, to where this celebration has come from. I think that history is very important. You're welcome.